guys welcome back to the go fast garage I got the bed off the truck today for a couple of reasons we got some good and some bad uh, the good is we're gonna try to get the fuel system finished up on this thing today the bad is the bed at the back the rust has just completely let go and this is what it's left me with for a bed mount so not so great we got to deal with that and uh, and we got to come up here and we're gonna have to cut a chunk out of the floor and replace it but we have some bed parts from uh, when we shortened the bed so that's not going to be a big deal and we're going to get this little door here working again so it's actually for the fuel system and we're going to get our fuel cell melted back here and uh, going to get everything done today except for plumbing it because i forgot to pick up some fuel line but other than that we should be good to go so the first step here is i'm going to have to take that apart and then i'm going to get my fuel cell and try to see how it fits in here okay we got the fuel tank ready to go into the truck here but uh, one thing i noticed when i started looking at the fuel sender is uh, this is the fuel sender that was inside that China fuel cell. And you can see how short the float is on it. And it would have probably told me that the tank was full at about three quarters and empty at about half. Cause this just doesn't have enough travel for how, look, look at this. There'd be full and there'd be empty, not even down to half. So I have this extra Mustang, uh, 70 Mustang fuel float and, uh, or fuel sender and I'm pretty sure I can take the arm off of this one and attach it to this one and it should give me a bit better range uh, as far as how the fuel gauge reads so I'm gonna do that now and let's see how this goes took the Mustang fuel float and I welded it onto the uh, arm from the Chinese tank and that should give me about the range I need so that should be empty and that'll be full so I think that's gonna work pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together now okay so after having a look at the bed here uh, this is marked out here it's probably about a little over two inch by let's say 10 inch patch I'm gonna have to do in the bed floor here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to cut a piece of the extra stuff I have out and uh, come back and weld it in. Okay, so I got the uh, bed patches cut out and uh, I got a couple of pieces made up. These are out of the other bed chunks that we cut out when we made it a short box. I don't know why I always say we, it was really mostly me. But anyways, uh, I went ahead and I welded in some pieces of angle iron in to replace that box brace. But uh, that should be pretty strong. I left it open on the ends because you can actually see it from the wheel well and I thought oh, I can be able to blast water through there when I wash the truck now and keep the dirt from piling up in there because I think that's really why it rusted out in the first place. But uh, now I got to go and make some little support braces to sit between the bed floor and the bottom box brace there so they make a sandwich and they don't crush the bed down. So I'm gonna, I got a couple pieces of like U-shaped bracketry that I'm gonna cut up. It's a bracket off of something else, I, I, just a piece of scrap really. So I'm gonna cut that up now and I'm gonna weld that in place.
Okay, we got the welding all done. I uh, got my patch panels welded back in and ground down. Drilled them out and put the first of the bed bolts in. And uh, yeah, everything just lined up perfect. So I've got all the bed bolts in now. Just uh, left it a little bit loose so I can just kind of fine tune the alignment on the bed. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it for pretty much for that project, for that rust repair. And uh, now next, <laughs> I had a little fire there, so that was great for the new garage floor. But uh, you wanna remember to take away any paper towel before you start welding, just a quick tip. But uh, now I gotta finish up plumbing up this fuel system and wiring up the pump. So I guess the next step is to build a few lines. And uh, yeah, I gotta hook my ground up there, but you can see the pump mounted to the side of the bracket. And the fuel cell's really no lower than the rest of the truck, but it still makes me nervous. I'm still not 100% sure about this, but I'm gonna run it this year and see how it does. All right, I got a little bit busy working and not filming again, because uh, that's just easy to do. But the fuel tank is all plumbed up and uh, wired up, and I actually hit the key and it runs. So the uh, fuel gauge is hooked up everything is working so i guess there's not much left to do now than get the truck set on the ground see how low that fuel tank really is to the ground and uh, then go and drive the snot out of the truck just like i always enjoy doing so let's get to that And we're back. So successful test drive on the new fuel system. No airlocks or weird bubbling or I don't know, anything that could go wrong didn't go wrong. So that was a nice change. And uh, yeah, the truck's running great and ready to go racing now. So September 29th in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, there's a street legals on a Saturday finally there. So I'm gonna run down and put the truck out there and just kind of see what it does. Um, otherwise, subscribe to my channel if you want to uh, keep track of what's going on with this truck. And uh, thanks for watching.